Today, scientists are searching for the elementary particle of matter, the basic building block of the universe, the so-called God particle. This search is undertaken in high-energy particle accelerators, where we accelerate particles around a circular track until they reach sufficient energy. When the desired energy is reached, they are made to leave the accelerator and enter into a target area, or bubble chamber, where they collide with other particles. The particles are never visible to us. All we ever see is the tracks, like the trails in the sky, made by a jet plane. Just as the patterns in the sky would not exist independently of the energy and motion of the jets, this video is going to put across the idea that these particles would not exist independently of the energy and motion created by the experiment, and that we do not have an elementary particle of the universe, but an elementary process that is universal and interactive. The process used in high-energy particle accelerators is the same process that a Stone Age man would have used to create fire. He would have hit two flints together, creating sparks, and if he had wanted to, he could have given the sparks names, just as the particles in high-energy particle accelerators are given names. I don't say this to belittle the work done with high-energy particle accelerators, but just to highlight how universal this process is. If we look at the tracks within a bubble chamber, it can seem impossible that one universal process can explain this. But if we break the image down into a process formed by a single photon oscillation or vibration of energy, we can see a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. The energy will radiate out in all directions, forming a sphere, forming a chain reaction of broken symmetry. This broken symmetry is in the form of energy levels cascading down, forming the Fibonacci curves and spirals, relative to particles that are already within the bubble chamber. On a larger scale, this process forms a random vibrations of Brownian motion. We use these vibrations in an individual atom in the form of atomic clocks to measure this universal process. We see and feel this universal process of continuous change, continuous energy exchange, as time itself that forms a dynamic geometry and curvature of space-time that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. The greater the energy, the slower time will run within an individual reference frame, and the greater the curvature of space-time within that frame of reference. The complexity and diversity of all life is based on the ratio of this dynamic geometry, of this one universal process.